Hello again, and uh, happy Sunday, everybody, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we have a new claim somebody says and post in that in the in the comment that Muslims they claim that there is a scientific miracle in the Quran, chapter six, verse one twenty-five. You see, you see, either either we have to agree that Allah is a stupid God, or He is a smart God. So, how many already stupid things we showed its existence in the Quran? I mean, how many times we need to prove that Allah cannot be God? And he is a foolish God if he is if he is a God. So if Allah he said one foolish thing that he is a foolish God and that's it. So what this point like uh, you know the Muslims say the Muslims say yeah, that's it either Allah he's a smart or he, he, he's a fool. The God who he think that uh, the, you know he send the uh, hail from mountains in heaven he cannot be God. I mean obvious, right? So uh, Allah, He knew what happened to you when you go to the sky, but you do not know where the uh, uh, the hail and the ice is coming from. <laughs> you know what I mean? So either He is a stupid or He is a not. He can't be smart and stupid at the same time. You cannot be two in the same time. Either He is a stupid or He is a smart. Now, the one who said this verse, is he the same one? He said the other verse? Yes. So which one of them is the smart one you are talking about? So you are, you Muslim, you are saying to us that Allah, he was a smart in that verse, but he was a stupid fool in this verse? I mean, this is silly. But before we go there, somebody asked a question about Jesus. He said, uh, Jesus, in order to be the... Uh, the son of uh, God. I don't know what the question was. He said uh, Jesus is a son of David. My friend, Jesus is from the seed of David by birth, which means he is born of Mary. That would make him go all the way to David. But he is not the son of David. This is why Jesus, he said to the Jews, he asked them the question. He said, what do you say of Christ? He, they said, he is a son of David. So Jesus said, well, if he is a son of David, then how David called him God? And you said in the text, I saw your comment, you said, well, the Jews refuse uh, the New Testament. Well, this is not from the New Testament only. This is from the Old Testament because Jesus is quoting the Old Testament. If you go to the to the, to the book of uh, Psalm, um, I think uh, chapter, I forgot, chapter 110, Psalm. Yeah, uh, if you go to the, the book of Psalm, you will see that that the Lord said uh, to my Lord, sit in my right hand. So this is not in the New Testament only. This is in the Old Testament. And who cares what the Jews say today? I mean, most of the Jews already they are Christians. You know, you need to, many people, they think the Jews, they say the Jews reject. Who say the Jews reject? Actually, 99% of the Jews already are Christians. The one who's left, this is why there are only a few millions. So don't say that Jews reject, the Jews accept it. Because you don't judge the majority by the minority. You know what I mean? So if I am in a, in a room and there is 99% uh, of the Jews accepted me, and then you say there's one Jew left, that's mean the Jews reject me. So you need to be smart and you need to use your intelligence. The majority of the Jews already are Christians. And who left is a very small, tiny minority. And actually, even those small, tiny minority, they are coming to Christ. And sooner or later, all of them became Christians. Now, for, I mean, people, they make choice. You want to be Christian, you don't want to be Christian. Uh, somebody is a Jew, he accepts, you don't accept. Who cares? This is your business. You yourself don't accept too, who cares? Now, we go back to our topic. This is the same God who the Muslim they say he is the same God who said this verse. What this verse is saying? <clears throat> Let us see what this verse is saying. Just for the sake of comedy. Chapter 6, verse 125. Thus Allah, the translation here is false. Anyone who use exchange the word Allah to God, he is a false translator. The word in Arabic is Allah. Allah is not a word meaning God. Allah is the name. Of this God, Allah, God, the 
the word al in the word is God and lah is the name. So al lah, God lah. Guide who, who's ever uh, he please by opening wide his breast to surrender. Okay. Uh, you see here the problem is most of those who translate, they are speaking with ignorance. They don't know even what this word yeshrah, the word in Arabic here yeshrah. If you see the translation, all Muslim translation, they say he, op you know, he, uh, he opening wide his breast. Opening wide his breast. Some in the Muslim article, they say he is extending his breast. This is an article about this uh, funny miracle. Difficulty of Escandadian to Sky, chapter 6, verse 185. And here they are saying to you, they quote for you from science, and they try to mix it with the Quran to make it be, to look, it's about the Quran, it's about science. So here they say to you, the, functionality, uh, the uh, uh, functions of the heart and the vein uh, topped by lack of oxygen, which turn the influence the lung, making one feel constructed if one resists going even higher, there come a moment when an individual lose his life. All right. But look what uh, what your prophets say in the Quran. As long as you are Muslims, you agree that the one who go to the sky, he will lose his life. Your God did not say that. I mean, you see, I'm using their, their own article showing me, this, it shows us how stupid this statement is. If you go up to the sky, then Allah should say you lose your life. Not only you will have a difficulty in your chest, as you claim, but all what Allah He says when you go up to the sky, and this is the Muhammadan translation. Read it. And whoever He, and by the way, here there's a, we have a problem, but we will go back to it. And whoever Allah He wills, He sent astray. He makes His bosom narrow. And strained as if he is scandating to the sky. First of all, when you go up to the sky, my friend, your bosom will not become narrow. It's going to extend the opposite because you have a lack of oxygen and even the pressure is less. So what happened is exactly the opposite of what the Quran is saying. You see, if you go to see those people who live in the mountains, you will see that you will notice right away that their shoulders and their chest is bigger. Why? Because, because of the location they live, they have less oxygen, so their chest is bigger. So they can consume more air inside to get the same oxygen you can get down. So what happened when you go up actually is the opposite from what the Quran is saying. And this is your own translation. Allah, he make your bosom narrow. When you go up, it doesn't go narrow. You see, when you go in an airplane, the airplane have to supply every passenger inside the airplane with normal pressure because the pressure in the sky up is less. It's not higher. <laughs> so what, what you call science is stupid. Secondly, do we have any Muslim here? Any Muhammadan? With Tahmidi YouTube? I don't know who is Tahmidi YouTube. I don't care. Anyway, so guys, are we listening? Do you see how stupid this is? Uh, this is the opposite. Not only that. This is the Muslim translation in front of us, proving to us that Allah is the devil. Whom Allah, he wills to send astray. What is the word there? What sent astray mean? Who is the one who sent people astray? This is the Muslim translation, not mine. Who is the one who deceived you? Allah. And why Allah, he deceived people? And why he sent them astray? The cabin... Uh, this is why I'm saying in, in the airplane you have the airplane have to maintain certain pressure otherwise you would die right but look what the, what the verse is saying the verse is saying the opposite the verse is saying uh, that your bosom when you go up became narrow right 
how that will become more narrow if you have less pressure? Do you understand what I'm saying? Less pressure will make you expand, not be narrow. More pressure will make you narrow, as simple as that. This is what pressure do. do. So here we find the first mistake. Secondly, the verse here is saying that Allah is the one who sent people astray. And this is the Muslim translation. But in Arabic it says, "Women yurid an yudilluhu, the one who Allah decide to deceive. You see, the Muslim they translate the word deceive as he want he want him to go astray. Look, it says he here, the translation. He allows to go astray. It doesn't say that. It's a false translation. It says the one who Allah want to deceive him. Change the translator. Let us see. We will take another Abdul. Any Abdul. The the the, the Riyadh Abadi, whatever his this guy. I don't know what this guy is. Let us see. <coughs> Do you see? Wh whomsoever he wills that he shall send astray. And look here, they are using astray again and again when the fact. It's more than just astray. It is yudil. It's mean he deceive him to be misguided. So here there's two mistakes, not one. Number two. When the Muslim, they play games with the word yashrah. Why we don't see Muhammad speaking about yashrah? Because Allah, he did the same for him. If you go back in the Quran, if we type the same word, you will find the word yashrah exists many times. Here we go. Chapter 6, verse 125, chapter 20, verse number 25, and chapter 94, verse number 1. Alam nashrah halaka sadrak. How Allah he did uh, uh, this uh, sharah thing. What sharah mean? Nashrah halaka sadrak. Let us go and see what Muhammad said about this story. Muhammad, he went to the heaven, exactly the same story about going to heaven. And then two angels, they came to him. And read carefully with me in Arabic for those who speak Arabic. It says, فَأُتِيتُ فَأُنْطُلِقَ بِي فَأُتِيتُ بِتَصْطٍ مِنْ ذَهَبْ فِيهَا مِنْ مَاءِ زَمْزَمْ فَشُورِ حَصَدُرِي For what? فَشُورِ حَصَدُرِي Exactly the words in the Quran. شُورِ حَصَدُرِي يَشْرَحُ صَدْرَهِ So what is that شُورِ حَصَدُرِي? Let us see what happened. According to the story, this is what Sharah Hasadri mean. Allah, He will open your chest. He will take all the organ in your chest, all the way to your testicles. And then He will wash it with the water of Zamzam, including your heart. And He will open it all the way. Actually, just to make it more clear for you, maybe you are not getting the, the image yet. All right? I understand that you guys, you don't have a good imagination. Maybe like the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, he is the best in that uh, field. So to, to make it more clear for you, uh, this is exactly what happened to Prophet Muhammad. This is what the Quran is speaking about. I mean, look, look what they make it, make it about science and about exogen and about the hydrogen, about this is what happened. Allah, he sent Jibreel and he opened the chest of the Prophet and he took, he took all the organs from the chest of the Prophet. And then he washed it in the water of Zamzam. And as you see in Arabic, Muhammad, he says, Fashara hasadri. Fashuri hasadri, exactly the same as in the Quran. So look what is a fiction became suddenly science and oxygen and airplane and the pressure and 5,000 blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and they put a lot of spice from, from, from scientific uh, uh, articles to put it in there, uh, to, to mix it with the Quran, to make you believe that this is the book of science. This is the prophet of science who came into us to tell us that before Allah, he take him to heaven and he shara hasadri. He cut off his chest all the way to his testicles and he took all the organs off and then he washed it with zamzam and he put it back. What is that? And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us, if Allah wants something, he say, be is going to be. Why Allah need to wash Muhammad literally, physically, the, the, the chest of Muhammad? What is inside? 
we forgot a screw or something what Allah is looking inside we will show you what Allah looking for inside you want to see here we go this is Muhammad explaining Sharah Hasadri, Hasad, not me you see this is the word exactly in the Quran here we go this is the Muslim they make it they make a big uh, fuzz about it this is the word here we go I highlight it it's exactly the same word okay what happened here we go so they came to me <clears throat> and they cut open my chest this is what Sharah Hasad mean read carefully Then a golden passing contained water of Zamzam was brought to me and my heart was open. By the way, it doesn't say my heart was open. It's my chest. And then and uh, 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 to the such and such a part, which means from here to here. Okay. Qutada said, I asked uh, uh, to him, who was with me? I, the narrator, uh, what he meant by such and such. He says, he replied, it meant it was open. Up to the lower part of abundamen where abundamen <laughs> now my heart was extracted and it was washed with, with water of zamzam and then it was restored in the original position after which was filled with faith and wisdom have you ever heard of a god he made surgery and he insert in the heart of his prophet, a dish full of faith and wisdom. Have you ever heard of a fit? What? <laughs> this is, so what, what is the science in this? This is stupid. Allah saying that the one who he believe in Allah Allah will expand his chest by filling it with faith and wisdom. And according to your God, this is a literally a real surgery. Even the Muslim, they say some people, they sew the stitches. Yeah, they sew the stitches. Hmm? In different hadith, Muhammad he said that they 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 stuffed his his uh, even his vein and and uh, and heart with the wisdom. Let us show the hadith. Hold on. Here we go. <clears throat> you see, and then Jibril cut open the part of his body from his throat to the middle of his chest. This is the current translation, but doesn't say that by the way. And then it says. He took all the material out of his chest, brother, and the abandonment, and then he washed it with zamzam water with his own hands till he cleansed inside his body. And then, brother, a golden tray, brother, a go in a gold bowl, brother, full of belief and wisdom was brought, and then Gabriel stuffed his chest and his throat, a blood vessel, with it. So this is the science you are talking about. Look what the science they are talking about. They made they made scientific miracles, hydrogen, oxygen, science discovery, uh, uh, air pressure, blah 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 blah. And this is all is nothing but a fiction, stupid stories. And is this a story? Is this is Sahih al-Bukhari? Here we go. This is the hadith number. Because they might say to you, oh, this is a not authentic story. <laughs> this is Sahih al-Bukhari. So my friend, either Allah is a stupid God or a smart God. This this man who said this is a story, he can't be a smart a smart person. Either his line, I want you to, to think about it. Either you believe really that there is a God who he sent his angels to stuff the vein and the nerves and the, and the, and the, and the throat and the heart and, and the lung of a man by wisdom and faith. Or you don't believe in that? What do you believe? Tell me. This is a statement of somebody is a fool. 
Because since when, I mean, who in the world want to believe that there is a God who sent faith and wisdom in dishes? Do you see it? And God, he washed the inside body of Muhammad with the water of Zamzam. That's it, it's Zamzam, which is proven to be arsenic and poisoning. And after he cleaned the body, brother, a golden tray. It has to be golden tray. I mean, come on, I will not accept a plastic tray. I mean, come on, Allah don't have gold. It has to be golden tray. Even Allah, he appreciate gold. A golden tray contain a gold bowl. It's, see, this is, the golden tray is not just a golden tray. No, there is a bowl in that. Hello? And then it is full, brother, or believe? I want the Muslim to tell me how in the world we can put a believe in a dish. <clears throat> so this is the science you are talking about? If we ask Zach and Naik how this has happened, a brother, how this is such, such a thing happened? He will say to you, a brother and sister, they are the prince and the name prince, and he always attack Islam. And this problem, all of the day, he have a problem. All of the day, he have a problem. And I'm not sure what is the problem. Uh, brother, but what about the question he's asking? Do you believe that faith and belief come in dishes? First of all, Allah is capable of doing anything. And he can't send his belief and his in any dishes. He can't send it in dishes. He can't send it in boxes. He can't send it in Amazon. He can send it even with UBS. Uh, brother, but it says it's a bowl full of faith. How is it? Is, is the faith is something physical? If Allah will, he can make it physical. And it is proving to me completely. So faith is something, if Allah will, he can make it physical. Exactly. Because Allah is Almighty God, he can make it. Uh, Zakanak, why always when you answer me, you squeeze yourself as if you are going to do poo poo? I'm not doing poo poo. Actually, I'm just refuting you. And I get you busted. Uh, but I'm not really convinced that faith and belief, and especially wisdom, how wisdom became something physical. I thought wisdom is something about knowledge which is exists in your memory, in your brain. And your brain use it. So how that can be came in a dish? Zakir? Zakir? Actually, in this case, he get a point. He get a point. But I'm going to review it to you. As an example, every day you read some information. And the more you read, the more you learn. Do you agree with me, Christian Prince? Uh, yeah, I agree. Exactly. Allah, instead of reading slowly, 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 Allah, he gave it to you in a dish. Like one time, bingo, you eat it and you are fed. Ah, and I was wondering where Zakir Naik, he get all this knowledge. Did you eat it in somewhere, Dr. Zakir Naik? I did not eat it anywhere. But Allah, he gave it to the Prophet specifically because he have a privilege. And Allah, Prophet, he don't know to go to school. He don't know how to read and write. This is why he, Allah gave it to him in a dish because he's an idiot. Okay, I'm really convinced. So, Muslims, this is the miracle you are talking about. And as you see, the Prophet, he said it clearly. He used the same word, Sharah Hasadrahu. <coughs> exactly the same word. Fashuri Hasadri. So I want you to say, I don't want to stay long here. I want you to say either Allah is a smart God or a stupid God. And obviously he's a stupid God. And whoever said this, he is a stupid prophet. And you have to be stupid to believe in such a stupid story. You have to be mentally ill to believe that there is somebody, he got his wisdom and his faith through a surgery. And by the way, when you say that Muhammad, he got his faith and his knowledge through a surgery, this is telling us how Allah is, uh, I mean, what you are trying to tell me, you Muhammadan, from this story, which is coming from your prophet, that your God is a fake person. He's not a creator. He's just trying to fix by a surgery. You see, the creator, he do not need to do a surgery to make his creation the way he wants. 
Do Allah knew that Muhammad would be a prophet? Do Allah knew that he is going to be his messenger? The Muslim, they would say, yes, sure, because Allah, he, you know, he said he write the fate of everyone. Wonderful. So why Allah do not need or do need to fix a situation of his prophet, which obviously that your prophet, you are saying to me, your prophet have a lack of intellect, which means he's a crazy, stupid, to the point he needed surgery, and he have a lack of faith, which means he is a kafir. This is what the story is saying to me here. Maybe many people do not notice that this is a very funny and stupid and proven to us it's time to be false because in order to make a surgery for a person, and I am God, that's mean I cannot say to him, be smart, and he will be smart. I have to send an angel to do a real surgery. And then Allah, he cannot use words to do any order. They have to make a real cut. And they, they have to make a really cleaning. And then they have to make really stuffing. And then they have to bring wisdom. And they have to bring faith. And then they have to stuff it inside his chest. And all of this happened. And after the surgery, Muhammad saying this story. Which means, can you imagine how stupid Muhammad is? Because this is a story been said by Muhammad after he got his wisdom. Do you, do you understand me, guys? Because the one who said this story... Is Muhammad after the surgery? So how foolish Muhammad was before the surgery then? Because after the surgery, Muhammad looked like a crazy person to me. He's mentally ill. He's saying stupid things. So if this is Muhammad after the surgery, Muhammad before the surgery was what? I will tell you he was what? He was Zakanai. Ibn and Sittar. Our Sittar, they ask a question. Why in Islam there is no woman see the Prophet? And I confirm with her and I agree. In Islam, we don't have women to the prophet because it's very logical. If a woman to become a prophet, she has to do the congregation. And if she leave the congregation, she has to do to do and we do. And if she do the do, and then the Muslim, they will not the turban, they will not the What the heck? Do you understand me, guys? 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 Do you understand and this is why a Muslim woman, she can't be a prophet according to Zakanai. Look like all of you, you need a surgery. Not only Muhammad. Look like all of you, you need a lot of dishes of wisdom. But please change the vendor of your wisdom because obviously Allah is not providing you with wisdom. Allah is providing you with stupidity. If this is wisdom, stupidity is what? This is not whiz dumb, this is whiz and dumb. Whiz, whiz, wark, wark. This is, uh, this is science. So I hope, guys, uh, this is a short video. A short video of Christian Prince is like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. This is a short, unbelievable. You hate me, don't you? No, no problem. No problem. So my friend, the one who asked question, as you see, this is very silly and very stupid. And either we have to agree that Allah is a stupid or Allah is a smart. But he cannot be both at the same time. And as you see, all those stories cannot be coming from someone is smart. A God who he thinks the sun set in the murky water and the sperm coming from the backbone. My backbone hurt me. Ah, now we know why a Christian prince is not getting married. His backbone is hurting him. <laughs> we got it. Now we know. Now we know it. Backbone. Backbone. Backbone, backbone. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? Backbone, backbone. I mean, have you ever heard of a smart God? You think that there is a sperm coming from the backbone? I mean, this God, he think testicles of men is made for what specifically? He think they are like a Christmas light or something? Or maybe they are balloon to swim with it. Backbone. I mean, don't you think, Muhammad, you went all the way to the wrong direction? What? The? Anyway, I hope that all of your backbone will be fine. And by the way, women have backbone. <laughs> and men have backbone. So we are the same. <laughs>
<laughs> Watch your wife backbone, my friend. She might be doing something in your back with her backbone. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Stupidity is amazing. Oh, okay. Anyway, thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you, and I hope you are enjoying your Sunday. And soon we will have here in America Thanksgiving. So before we finish here, I want to say to you, uh, you see in America a celebration. It's called Thanksgiving. This is the first migrant when they came to America. The uh, they uh, produce their four, uh, first uh, crops and uh, vegetation, etc. So they have a day to thank the Lord for what they, he gave them. Very beautiful. But actually, I think all of us as a Christian, we should celebrate Thanksgiving every day. So I invite you, all of you, every day before you eat, to say very few words, anything from your heart. Thank you, Lord, for the bread we have. Don't make a long prayer. Don't, you know, the Lord, he is simple and he loves you know, those who they are simple too. So always be thankful for having whatever you have, because whatever you have can be taken from you. Sometimes we have things around us, they are priceless, but we don't see them. It's like a human being, he don't know what it's mean to lose a tooth until he lose them. <laughs> and then when you talk, you talk like Zach and I. But because you have them, they are there for granted. You don't feel them. You don't, you don't know how, how good to have them. So you have to be thankful for things you have so the Lord will bless your life and bless your heart. And the most important thing we thank the Lord for after him being our Lord is the gift of being able to think. This is a priceless gift. Because by our right thinking, we make the good of fruits. And the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So my friend, be thankful for the Lord, for he is amazing, for he is beautiful, for he is the one who helps us to expose those liars and those lies, so we will not be deceived by the devil. Our Lord not only is smart, not only, we don't want to say genius, we want to say is beyond this stupidity. This is an insult to think that there's a God he can say and speak in such a way. All right? And my friend, the one who is saying in Indonesia they are burning churches, trust me, that is not is not against Christianity. That will be make will make of you a better Christian. Discrimination for Christians always work in the opposite direction. It makes us a better Christian and make Christianity spread. After fourteen hundred years of discrimination of us, Arab Christian in the Middle East, we are here, and we are stronger than ever. Because the fire will make you not only iron, will make you steel. Hard, tough, a warrior. Don't worry about it. Never worry about it. We are always victorious, and the Lord is our victory. Thank you all for being here. My family, I love you all. Thanksgiving for everybody. And thank you, Lord, for having those beautiful people from around the world listening to me. I'm your servant. I'm no one. I don't deserve to have those people listen and to be with me. But you bless me with them. I'm blessed to be part of their family and they are my family. And you are our father, our provider, our Lord, our savior, who save us from all this madness we see around us in this earth, stupidity and foolishness. Human being became very fool. And the Lord, he said, my people being destroyed because of their ignorance. So my friend, let us together fight ignorance. This is our enemy. Our enemy is not a Muslim. He's a poor guy. He is an ignorant person. He needs our help. Our enemy is ignorance. Our enemy is the devil. Our enemy, the father of all lies, is Satan. It is that. So always focus in the head of the snake. Don't look at the tail. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.